better. It's vintage. It smells bad, but, but it's heaps better. Welcome back everyone to Vintage Bolton. Today is a little bit special because I'm on camera for the first time and it could be the last. Uh, but today I am here doing a bit of an experiment, a bit of a shootout with my new acquisition, the Audio Quest Dragonfly Black DAC. So you're probably after some context. Well, those that know me and follow the channel, I am a turntable and vinyl enthusiast. I can't get enough of it, but damn, vinyl is expensive these days. It never used to be. It wasn't really that expensive, I don't think, in my parents' era, let alone 10 years ago, even five years ago. And I don't have a large collection of uh, vinyl. I have the right collection for myself. I don't have that much space, so I'm very choosy, I'm very picky about what I buy, and then I thrash the hell out of it. And I've always streamed music, you know, from being a young person with an iPod. That was my first introduction to MP3s, probably like a lot of people. So out of convenience, I wanted to step up the quality of streaming my digital music. And the Dragonfly Black is the entry-level offering from AudioQuest, followed by the red and the cobalt. And that way, I could really pick and choose what I'm after before I commit to buying it on vinyl. And you know, it's great for house parties. Um, it's great for putting playlists together. There's no arguing that, you know, streaming music is very convenient. I don't have a FLAC library, zero FLAC files, zero high-res files. Um, all I've ever had was the iPod and Spotify. So I started doing some research about Tidal and the new MQA master files. I thought, ooh, well that could certainly be a step up from my free Spotify subscription with all those annoying adverts. But was I willing to pay a premium for that Tidal subscription? So it's going to be the Dragonfly DAC either plugged into my Google Pixel 6 phone or plugged into my laptop, both streaming Tidal versus Spotify versus my trusty dual 1218 turntable. Nothing flash. I didn't think this would be fair to be playing some uber souped up turntable, just something you know, that stood the test of time from the 70s. Um, usually I'll be playing that through my Tavish valve tube preamp, phono preamp, but I didn't think that was fair. So everything today will be running through my Mission Cyrus. It's not plugged in. Everything today will be playing through my original Mission Cyrus one with no tone controls. The only thing I need to make sure is that the DAC will be bypassing any of the inbuilt DACs on the laptop and the phone. Which, depending on what laptop and phone you've got, it's gonna be different. Um, from what I found, it did a good job of just bypassing them automatically. But there may be things like in the Dell laptops, um, the Max Audio um, software that you might need to disable in the background before it, it, it makes your music sound like. <sighs> So I think that that's a really affordable way to get into the world of DAX. Was I gonna go out and buy some thousand dollar Blue Node streamer before I really figured out if I like them or not? What music am I gonna be comparing? Today I'll be comparing a couple of my favorite albums. Really only a couple of songs. I don't have that much time. My original. Japanese pressing of Pink Floyd's Dark Side of the Moon and I'm mainly going to be playing Money from that album and one of my all-time favorite new albums by Saint Germain. Round one, fight! Ugh, yeah. So the first thing I did was I reacquainted myself with my trusty old iPod, played Pink Floyd's Money on it and immediately just moved over to trusty old vinyl. 
reacquainting myself with the iPod sound, then to the vinyl version, and then straight into Tidal from my laptop with the Dragonfly DAC. Well, wowie, what a surprise. I mean, the iPod is, is left in the dust. That's, that is obviously yesteryear's technology. My iPod doesn't even have the Fame Wolfson DAC. I think it's got the Sirius DAC. Anyhow, wow, wowie. I was surprised at just how close a sound I was getting from Tidal's MQA, Playing Money by Pink Floyd, to the vinyl experience. What really struck me was just how warm the MQA stream was. You know, my experience with, with digital music has always been quite cold, quite sterile. Obviously, it's, it's super clean and nice and quiet. Those backgrounds are quiet, but maybe it's that extra detail coming through. Maybe it's fuzzying up the sound a little bit. It really reminded me of vinyl. And I was not expecting that. Both albums were very meaty. They had banging clarity, but without being too clinical or sterile. It really gave the turntable a good run for its money. I don't think the title stream competed with the turntable in terms of bass. The, the turntable just has, you know, a sense of rhythm, tight bass, um, probably because it's an idler wheel turntable, so you're gonna get a little bit of extra um, bass from that rubber wheel. But the, the difference was negligible, you know? The sound stage was incredible on both. Uh, the turntable still wins out in that sense, that left, right separation. Round two, Spotify versus Tidal. What if I didn't want to pay for that very expensive Tidal subscription, that premium subscription? And I wanted to either just pay for pre Spotify premium or the free, or just keep it free with all those really annoying ads. But first we probably need to go over exactly the difference of the files that they're playing. So titles, provided you've got a DAC like the Dragonfoot, like the Dragonfly Black, that's capable of decoding the MQA files, that will be streaming at 9,216 kilobits a second, compared to Spotify, which will only be streaming MP3s at at 320 kilobytes per second. So that's a staggering difference on paper, isn't it? But was it such a big difference to my ear? Not really. Um, yes and no. <laughs> Spotify's stream was a shade behind titles, I thought. In terms of detail, presence and soundstage, yeah, there's a little bit of a veil over, over the Spotify stream. And probably the biggest difference would be just how clinical the Spotify stream sounds compared to that warmth that I was just getting out of titles MQAs. Bonus round. Round three. Who wins out of streaming from the uh, phone to the laptop? Uh, there was no difference. I didn't think there was much of a difference. Probably the only difference was that I couldn't be scrolling on the internet while I was listening to my music because the phone would be over there plugged in. Conclusions and questions. Burning questions and conclusions. The biggest question for me would be, am I willing to continue paying for Tidal's MQA premium subscription or just drop back to Spotify's free or even premium subscription? Well, that's a tough one. Um, my wallet and my common sense is telling me just use Spotify, but having listened to the MQAs now, um, and title stream. I don't think I can go back. So I'm gonna keep that. I'm very happy with that. Those MQAs are just so much closer to the vinyl experience for me and that's great. That's gonna help me make better decisions when buying really expensive vinyl. But for a lot of people out there, I think, you know, if you had a decent, half decent amplifier and some speakers, you would be more than happy with Spotify's um, premium subscription or free subscription. But if you're demanding just a little bit extra from your stream, it's definitely worth it for Tidal. Do both streaming services sound better with the DAC? Yes. I had heard that possibly 
using a better DAC with Spotify would bring out all its imperfections and you'd be able to hear all that lost quality and the crunching of the, the quality. But I didn't get that, no way. A really big side point to remember is that any trashy recording is gonna sound like trash on any of these sources. Spotify, Tidal, Vinyl, if it's, if it's poorly recorded in the studio, um, it's not going to come through good on any system. It's gonna make your ears bleed. Did Tidal come close to knocking over my love of vinyl on turntables? No, of course not. There's nothing that really comes close to the sense of rhythm and pace that a turntable can give. The turntable itself is much like an instrument. I can't back that up. I don't play any instruments. But you can tweak a turntable to your liking, to a certain extent. You can almost tweak its, its tone through physical analog adjustments. Obviously the cartridges are gonna be different. They say you wanted more bass, use an idler turntable or a suspended turntable. If, you're, if your tone arm allows for it, you can slightly balance it to tilt downwards towards the cartridge. It's gonna give you a little bit more bass. However, digital is so much cleaner. Obviously those pops and crackles are gone um, and the backgrounds are quiet. The blacks are black which really puts you in audio nirvana when you're sitting there in your room listening to those quiet passages and those albums that you love. But that'll teach me for not cleaning my records as much as I could. Well, I think I got exactly what I wanted out of today in this test and experiment. I now have a really great digital streaming source for my music. I'm gonna enjoy titles, MQA master files as much as I can, and then I'm gonna go and choose the vinyl that I want out of that and thrash the hell out of it. So if this has helped you at all in any way, please like, subscribe, leave a comment below. Especially if you don't want to ever see me on camera again, you can tell me. Bye for now.